hello everyone, my name is Louis and I'm a developer relation engineer with Agimpulse. Our goal at Agimpulse is to enable embedded developers to build applications and solve real problems using machine learning without being an expert in machine learning. This being said, during this small video, 10 minutes about, we are going to see how we can uh, create a machine learning model and deploy it back directly to the generic node. Um, we are going to follow a few steps. Uh, first will be some data collection and we are going to use our phone because it's surely the easiest way um, to collect some data. Then we are uh, going to create an impulse to design our machine learning pipeline, uh, which is composed of one uh, digital signal processing block and one machine learning block. And then we are going to test our model on data that has been unseen to the model and make sure our, the accuracy shoots us. And then we are going to deploy it back. Um, if you do not have an account on Edge Impulse yet, uh, feel free to create one and then create a new project. Um, for, this, for this particular use case, uh, I already created a, a project which is called the generic node. Um, there is a public link so you can access it and you can clone it, or clone it on your account. The goal of this project is to classify three different kinds of movements. Uh, first is idle, so no movements at all. Uh, the second one is unknown, so you don't know the movement. And the third one is driving, uh, whether uh, a package or a pallet is in a truck or a car. Um, feel free to add some more movements that you want to try to classify. For example, if a pallet is in a train or um, a plane, or, uh, those kind of things. And then you can create your own, your own custom logic. Um, so first, navigate to the device tab and collect a new device. Um, to use your phone, uh, we are going to show a QR code. And let me share um, what's on my phone so that I can directly scan it. And here we go. So my phone is connected. I'm going to want to classify some different kind of movements. Um, I'm setting the label as unknown um, and then I would start recording some, some data. So start recording, so I'm doing some unknown movements. Oops, it has been disconnected, but you saw the, you saw the interface. So this is going to last for about 30 seconds. And you can do the same with all those kind of movements. For example, while driving, I uh, had someone pressing the, the button to register, to register some data. Um, so here, the this data sample has been uploaded. Uh, so let me go back to the that, uh, let me go to the data acquisition tab. So this is the one I just uh, I just recorded. Um, you can see my data set here is pretty balanced. So I already have some data uh, because otherwise it's going to take too long for this video. Um, here, if I just want to show you what's a bit the data like. Um, so for example, driving. Um, here you can see that's the pattern that I was following. For example, driving. Um, here I was probably stopped at the traffic lights. Idle, it means no movements at all. So for example, if you compare to the other one, uh, the car here was probably, well, was detecting some vibration, the, the, the accelerometer, whereas here, the idle, uh, idle, it has nothing, basically. So once you collected some data, um, you can, uh, you need to make sure that you have some data in your test data. Uh, so when you record with your, with your phone, you have an option to split your data sets. Uh, so 80% of your, of your data goes to the training set and 20% goes to the, to the test set. Um, this will uh, be used later just to make sure our, um, our model is accurate. Once you've done that, you can create an impulse, which is kind of our machine learning pipeline. Here, um, you can, well, for this particular use case, make sure you change the frequency uh, to uh, 50 Hertz instead of the 62.5 Hertz, um, because on the generic node, the some of the accelerometer parameters are um, 50 Hertz. So you can set it to 50 Hertz. So now we are going to select a processing block, which is going to be the spectral analysis. So we are going to extract some meaningful features for the neural network to learn on. 
then uh, you need to select a classify a classification learning block so it's using keras it's basically a classifier and it's going to classify three kinds of different movements um, driving idle or unknown you can save your impulse and then navigate to the second tab here you can let the default parameters, but if you are a DSP expert, uh, feel free to feel free, feel free to change it. Um, with those parameters, it giving some pretty good results when you uh, generate your features. Uh, we have something very useful, which is the the feature explorer. So you can see the repartition uh, in a three D visualization of how it, are you data samples clustered. Um, so here it's all my idle states. So there is no, not a lot of variancy in, uh, in, this, uh, in this data set, in all the data samples, uh, as there is no movements. Here it's mostly the driving. Um, we have one axis, which is kind of always the same. And then in the unknown movements, uh, it's a bit more splits uh, across the, the repartition. Um, but what's interesting is that when you can distinguish some clusters, it means that your neural network will likely to be, um, uh, well, to learn uh, easily. So once you're happy with, the, with that, uh, you can navigate to the uh, neural network classifier. Here, I kind of changed the default parameters to, to add a more complex um, architecture, um, but you can try with a default one, which has only two dense layers, uh, one of 20 neuron and one of 10 neurons. Um, to avoid uh, over uh, overfitting, I just added a, a dropout here in the middle, but. Um, you can leave the default parameters and when you train it, um, well, once you train it, you have uh, the, uh, the access to the accuracy, the loss. Uh, one interesting thing is the confusion metrics. Here, the accuracy is pretty good, so I don't have any classes that are uh, too much over, uh, overlapping. And then again, you have the, um, the feature explorer where you can see, uh, for example, if some uh, data has been misclassified, uh, for example, here. Um, so once you're happy with your model, you can test it directly on the platform. Uh, so you can click on classify all and it will run the inference across all your uh, test data samples. And here I've got a good accuracy, so I'm, um, I'm happy with that. Once you've done that, you can navigate to the deployment tab. And for this particular use case, we are going to choose the C++ library. Uh, because the generic node is not officially uh, and fully supported by uh, Gimples. You can uh, select the quantized model, uh, you can enable the Eon compiler, uh, which compiles the TF Lite um, library one step down, so we optimize uh, the RAM, the ROM, and while keeping almost the same accuracy. So I'm clicking on build. Here it's going to build the, the project and uh, I will get an archive. So my archive is here. Once I do have it, let me move it here. So here it is. Once you have your, uh, your projects, you can um, first um, download or, or clone this repository, which is going to be the source project of um, that you, you are going to import in your STM32 cube IDE. So to do that, open a terminal and let me zoom in a bit so you can see here my so here is the the, the repository. If you want to download it, you, you can just do a git clone and this uh, this link. And I also cloned uh, the default project from the generic uh, uh, generic node, um, which is just uh, doing that. So you need to clone it as well. And once you uh, clone this. Um, this repository, what we are going to do is just. Oh, let me. Sorry. So, here. So, I'm going to select from my downloaded uh, custom model, so the one that, that has been created for me. I'm going to uh, select the model parameters and the TF Lite model. I'm going to copy this and navigate to my uh, workspace. So, um, sorry here so and I'm going to 
paste it in the core folder. Um, so I'm going actually to replace uh, the two, those two folders. And I'm going to copy this whole uh, example back to the uh, generic node software library. So app, and I'm going to copy that directly here. Now I'm going to open the STM32 cube IDE and create a new um, here. And I'm going to create a new a new workspace, a new folder. Uh, sorry, I tried my new um, inference generic node. Create open. So this is going to be a blank uh, project. I'm going to launch it. Blank wor workspace. And then you can directly uh, import your file. So I have no idea how to zoom in uh, in Eclipse, but you can go to File, Import, and then select uh, General Existing Project into Workspace. Click on Next, select your root. Where is your uh, generic node dot, uh, dash SE? So mine is on a workspace. Generic node, and it's this one. Uh, so now that I have it, I can just open that and it will list all the basic projects. So here I've got one called Edge Impulse uh, Inference, which is the one I just copied with my custom model. I finish that, I import everything and then we are going to build. Okay, so everyone has been imported, everything has been imported. and. Here I've got my project. Oh. Edge impulse um, main that's plus plus. So if I open this uh, particular main that C plus uh, plus edge impulse in on the edge impulse inference uh, project, there is something that you need to replace uh, that you can find directly on on your uh, live classification. So I'm going to classify one sample that I already collected. Uh, feel free to find a way to just grab the accelerometer data from the uh, from the generic node. Here uh, it's just a standalone example. So for example, if I'm checking, if, I, if I'm getting the driving one here, I will be provided. Uh, so those data are data that has been unseen to the model. So I'm just grabbing, uh, for example, here I'm just moving a bit. I'm copying that to the clipboard and I'm replacing this whole array from here to there. And I'm copy pasting uh, one, well, those, those raw data. I save it and then uh, I build. Uh, so both should work, uh, debug and release. Let me try debug. And here we are, our project has been compiled. So I'm going to find it in the debug uh, folder and I'm going to grab the edge impulse inference to bin. Uh, here's my ST. Um, so here I've got my ST link and I'm just copy pasting that to my, so to, to, flash, to flash the board. And once I do that, I can open a serial monitor and I can see the inference settings that are set in the main.c++ and it will just run the classifier across the data that I just passed in the raw feature uh, buffer. And here it was driving. So that's it for today. We sh we've seen how to run the standalone example um, on the generic node. Um, so we created a custom model and we flashed it on the generic node. So feel free to create your own custom logic and to create uh, great applications. Um, thank you for watching and have a great day. That was Louis Moreau uh, at Edge Impulse.